In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to transform this mainboard that belongs to a XBR75X940D into a mainboard for an XBR65X930D. If you take a look at the boards very closely, the only difference is just the type of heatsink that they use. Every other component on the board is identical. I just installed the main board back into the TV, so let's plug it in and see what happens. We're getting the amber green light on the standby light at the bottom of the TV, which means the main board is not paired to the TV itself, so we're gonna have to do that. For those of you that don't know how to do that, we'll have a link in the top right. It looks like the pairing procedure is not taking. We still have the amber green. We tried a few different times, and no matter what we do, it just goes back to the amber green. So what we're gonna do is an EMMC repair. The reason we're gonna do that is because number one, we want to convert this board into the 65 inch 930D version. And we do need to replace the MMC with that type of software in order to do the conversion. And secondly, if this issue is due to a fault with the main board, because we don't actually know if that main board was good or not, the EMMC would be the repair we would need to do in order to fix it. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll plug it back in the TV. Now that we've replaced the EMMC and reinstalled it in the TV, let's power it on and see what we get. So it's turning on, which means that the EMMC conversion did work, and now we have a XBR65X930D mainboard, even though originally it was a 75X940D. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more testing, make sure everything works. All right, so it's actually not recognizing that anything's plugged in. Typically when there is something plugged into the HDMI, you'll get a little sign or a logo next to it indicating it's plugged in but i'm not getting anything so that means this board still has a problem we have an hdmi failure so let's go ahead and take care of that with the main board on the test bench under the microscope we're going to be doing short checks around the hdmi processor we have this silicon image brand hdmi processor that typically shorts out and as always, we don't usually pull up the schematics to find out exactly which pins to check. An easier way to do it is we just check capacitors around the IC to see if they are shorted or not. Um, based off of another good board that we had, we're expecting to have about 50 ohms on a lot of the capacitors around the, uh, the chip. So if I check this one, I believe it was showing 10 ohms earlier. And right now it's actually showing 5.3 ohms, which is much too low. We'll check another one over here and see what we get on this one. Let's see. Oops. Uh, I keep slipping. Okay, and that one's 5.8, 6. So that is also much too low. That means that the uh, IC chip is shorted. And as we can tell, this is our ground side, let me, on this side. And of course, this side then goes to this pin over here. So that pin is shorted. Let's go ahead and remove the silicon image and we'll do some more checks afterwards. This is a pretty big chip, so I'm gonna use bottom heat and I'll add some flux as well. And because the chip is so big, it doesn't really fit in the camera uh, all the way. So this is the best what we got. All right, that got real smoky. You gotta be very careful with these because there's tons of little capacitors and resistors right next to these traces. Now we're just gonna clean up the old flux off the board. Before we put our new chip on, we're gonna do a second check of the capacitors. So back in resistance, let's take a look. So now we're getting kilo ohms, 19 kilo ohms. Oh, and I'm getting 19 kilo ohms as well. So when we put the new chip back on, the resistance should actually come back down to about 50 ohms or so. And that's gonna be what we're looking for. That's our target. So I, of course, forgot the orientation of the chip, but 
I think I'm seeing a little dot over in the top left corner, which would indicate the pin one. And I have a little dot uh, over here on my silicon image. So I'm gonna guess that this is the correct orientation, but to be sure, we're gonna check off of a picture on the internet. We're actually off of that other board I have. Okay, yep, so that is the correct orientation. But before I place it, I actually do have to add a little bit of solder paste. And as always, I put way too much. Let me go ahead and remove some of that. And that should be good. Let's see, is that... Uh, almost, not quite. You definitely want to make sure that it's lined up as best as possible. And let's see if up top we're still good. All right, and we've about reached temperature, so we can go ahead and hit it with some hot air. Whoops. And I'm just poking at it right now to make sure that the solder is nice and cool, which it is. The chip is no longer moving, so now we can go ahead and start soldering the sides. Oh. All right, I, I don't think this tip is actually gonna work out. Uh, I can't even make any movements without either knocking off a component or just a component getting in the way that I can't actually properly solder. So we're going with a smaller tip and see if that works a little bit better. One of the issues I'm, I'm experiencing right now is I can get solder on the pins but I'm having a hard time getting solder on the pad that is below the pen because so little of it is exposed. And because this is also a scavenge chip, I think some of the pins are a little bit bent from when I removed it. And so they're not actually making contact with the, with the board, with the pad below the pins. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm actually pushing the pins in as I'm soldering. And it seems to be working so far. At least I'm getting better success. I think that's pretty good. Just have now this blob of solder we need to get rid of. Gonna bring it all the way over to the corner and maybe I can get rid of it off of it. There we go. Perfect. So now with one of the scraping tools, I'm gonna go over each pin and make sure that all of them are properly making contact. And it looks like that's the case. There's just one little spot right here that kind of looks bridged. Let's clean it up a little bit more. No, we're okay. It was that last pin in the corner, but I think that's just flux, so we're all right. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing again, but to the other three corners now. Oh, looks like I bent a pin. We're gonna have to fix that. So what I'm gonna do is melt the solder with the iron and then with this very fine tip needle, I'm gonna push the leg so it's back to centered on the pad. And there we go. 
I finished soldering the last two corners and I did my pin check with the dental tool. So we're gonna do our last resistance, resistance check in ohms mode and we're gonna stick with the same ones. Whoops. All right, and what do we get? So right now we get 33 ohms and over here, Twenty-seven ohms, so it's going down just because I still have the the board is a little hot, but um, I'm told by my tech about thirty to forty ohms is what we're expecting. But the important thing is we're not getting the ten ohms that we were getting before, so this chip should be good. And we'll go ahead and now plug it back in and do a life check. All right, so final life check. We'll plug it in and see what we get here. All right, HDMI one. Yeah, all right, so it is working. So we have a 75X 940D now converted to a 55 or 65X 930D with perfect working HDMI's. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.